outside Madison Square Garden for the 1979 World Karate Championships. To my right, one of the key organizers of the event, Aaron Banks, who earlier in the week created great controversy with his startling new remarks about the death of Bruce Lee. Aaron, I wonder if you'd mind repeating some of your remarks for our TV audience. Well, I believe Bruce Lee was murdered by something called the touch of death or the vibrating palm. This is where a person can touch somebody in a particular area of their body in a way that can reverse or change the normal bodily functions. The result is that within three or four weeks, the person will drop dead. So somebody was out to get Bruce? I think so. Perhaps he just was revealing too much of the Chinese martial arts. You know, like taking the mystery out of it all. The secret of karate is power. Internal power from the ear. The vibrating palm. How does it work? It's internal power. The Chinese scriptures call it the chi, the Japanese call it the ki. It's heat that emanates from the palm, right here. I see. And this palm is simply placed against any portion of the body, and death will result in three to four weeks. Yes, it could, and no one would know what happened to the individual as in the Bruce Lee case. Corner there put the cause of death as misadventure. Now, all misadventure means is that they really don't know what happened to the man. The one thing we do know is that Bruce was in too good of condition to die of natural causes. And it wouldn't have been a freak injury because he knew exactly where he was, what he was doing in terms of exercise. Now, what portion of the body is this palm placed upon? Could be any part. That's the eerie thing about it. It all depends on how strong the applied power is. Tell me something, Aaron. Are you able to do this? I'd like to think so. Before he died, Bruce was experimenting with it and showed me the basic principle. then that Bruce was starting to find out too much about the vibrating palm and therefore had to be silenced? Something like that. One last question. Who do you think killed Bruce Lee? I really don't know. Uh, Aaron. Aaron. This is Adolf Caesar outside Madison Square Garden for the 1979 World Karate Championships. Square Garden, World Karate Championships. Black belt champion Bill Louie is maneuvering for position against his opponent. And then suddenly, he grabs for the eyes and twists violently, ripping them out from the sockets and, in a dazzling piece of showmanship, tossing them to the crowd. Hello, I'm Adolf Caesar here at ringside to bring you the 1979 World Karate Championships. And the big question on everybody's mind is, who will be Bruce Lee's successor? And... Can he live up to the legend of the king of the martial arts? For this evening's main event is the welterweight division's championship bout, which most experts agree will go a long way in determining the eventual successor to Bruce Lee. However, not everyone here agrees with that assumption. And tonight and during the course of this show, we'll talk to many guests who feel no one has a right to claim Bruce's king of Kung Fu title. So stay with us, it should be a fascinating evening. But before I go any further, let me say a word about the extra special significance of tonight's competition. Last week, the tournament sponsors announced that they were dedicating this event to the memory and the martial arts legacy of Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, perhaps the greatest karate expert of them all, certainly the most influential. In fact, many of the guests here tonight 
owe their skills to Bruce's dedicated training methods and his inspirational leadership. So you better believe they'll be out there tonight giving their something extra in honor of their mentor. Shortly before he died, I did a series of interviews with Bruce. And in them, they show something of his philosophy of life and the martial arts. They also reveal what a special person he was. In this first one, he talks about the mind in martial arts. You must realize that 90% of the martial arts is mental agility and that your body is a weapon that can kill a man. Therefore, you must use this mental power to control your actions. So you're saying that the mind must be trained and conditioned as well as the body. The mind must be cultivated so you can eventually know yourself. Well, how do you cultivate your mind? Mental exercises. Uh, such as what? Yoga. And even Zen. Meditation helps. Well, then you're performing almost a sort of self-hypnosis. You make it sound so... so mysterious and elusive. But it's really not like that at all. Or would you mind uh, elaborating more on that? It's making the mind respond instinctively. You do this by eliminating all variables in behavior. Well, why are all these variables bad? They're too unpredictable. Well, that should make it interesting. Such risks are counterproductive to everything you're trying to do. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have a title bout in the welterweight division later on. However, early in this week, a note of controversy attached itself to this match, as well as Bruce Lee himself. Aaron Banks, Mr. Karate, and a key organizer of tonight's match, raised new questions about Bruce's death in a series of interviews he gave this reporter, among others. His remarks not only enraged Bruce's friends, but also the managers of the two fighters who are fighting tonight here for the championship. They were furious because Banks later went on to imply that the touch of death would kill any heir apparent of Bruce, just as it did himself. They called it a cheap trick to publicize the event and castigated Banks for worrying their fighters on the eve of the match with what amounts to a death threat. Recently, Banks demonstrated to this reporter the basic principle behind the touch of death. This is very difficult to do. It's not the kind of thing you get right away. The problem is you have to generate power from such a short distance and really can't depend on any momentum. You've got to concentrate. Concentration is everything. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The stage is set. And tonight, we'll have the answers to these questions. Who will be Bruce Lee's successor? And will he meet the same fate as Bruce? A fate which Aaron Banks calls the touch of death. We'll talk more about this later on. But first, let's take another look at a remarkable bout from the past. This one pits badass Bonnie Lee against Fred the Flying Fat Man. The Flying Fat Man sure lives up to his name. This is a community, or free sparring match, where the object is to score points by means of unobstructed areas on an opponent's body. Like there. And believe you me, you can't get much more specific than that. And just behind me, down by ringside, is Fred Williamson. Looks like he's having a little trouble with his fans. I wish I had that kind of trouble. But seriously, folks, Fred will be with us later on to talk about his feelings towards Bruce Lee and also this event. So be sure to stay with us for that. Old Fred almost didn't make it here. <laughs> it's quite a story. Uh, how much time do we have? Five minutes? Okay, let me divert for a second and tell you about it. It all started around 10 a.m. this morning.
The wake up call was for 8 o'clock, not 10 o'clock. My name is not Belafonte, it's Fred Williamson. what I'm paying $200 a day for, huh? I gotta be downtown in 20 minutes. Fred, forget about it and get back under the covers. Yeah, that's a nice idea, baby, but I gotta get moving. But why? It's just a karate match. Yeah, that's all it is, all right, just a karate match. That somebody's got to be there to keep reminding him that that's all it is, just a karate match. I mean, who ever heard of fighting for a Bruce Lee title that don't even exist? Besides, I promised I'd be there. You've broken promises before. Last night you promised you'd satisfy me. And here I am, still wanting. <laughs> wanting what? I mean, ain't five times enough for you? Oh, Fred, let's make it a six-pack. Uh, yeah, I'll call room service and get one. Please. Well, I guess they can wait. Belafonte is back with his dynamite new album, Reggae Riot. Listen to that Belafonte sound. My cab, I was here first. Look, I know you're Harry Belafonte and all that, but so what? I'm Jasper Milktoast. Oh, hey, put me down. What do you think this is? Come on, we're where? Milktoast. Come on. I am not Belafonte. I am Fred Williamson. Oh. Oh. Eight million people in New York. I gotta pick Fred Williamson to start a fight with, huh? Shit! Oh, metal sticks. Well, I'll just have to walk to Plato's retreat. Thanks, my man. All right. This isn't my day. Mm -hmm. First, the hotel doesn't wake me up on time. I can't find a cab, and some clown tries to pick a fight with me. Well, I'm a little late myself, but nothing short of a death in the family is gonna make me miss this event. Yeah, some event. Two cats fighting for Bruce Lee's title that don't even exist. I mean, that's kind of absurd, isn't it? <laughs> Look, Fred, I just work for the TV networks. So <laughs> I don't have anything to do with it. I just call it like I see it. Yeah, anything for high ratings, huh? I mean, if they want high ratings, why don't they just put me in the ring with you? <laughs> Save your anger for the TV cameras. I'd like to get all of that in my interview. No, it's not anger. It's just professional concern. But don't worry. When the cameras roll, so will I. Well, put on your charisma, my man. Your fans are waiting. Belafonte. 
but he made it, despite a hundred and one obstacles and distractions which would have deterred any less determined man. So you better believe he's really psyched up for tonight's competition. And hold it, hold it just a second, there's a bit of commotion around here, I think better. Yes, I do believe Bill Louie has just entered into the arena. Let's see if we can pick him up on one of our remote cameras. Bill Louie, he's quite a showman, and the crowd really loves him. And with good reason, too, for he's one of our most exciting martial artists. Here he is in a demonstration from last year's event. Many people think of Bill as a possible successor to Bruce Lee because of the strong physical resemblance and Bill's mastery of the Lee fighting form. But don't let that fool you. Bill's his own man with his own particular martial arts style. Notice, for example, the lightning quick use of hands and feet. Karate fans, watch this man. He could be number one before long. He certainly ranks up there on my list of karate champions. An exclusive interview with international film star and martial arts magician, Ron Van Cleef, live from a gym here in New York, where Ron is currently training in future defense of his World Karate Championship. Ron, can you hear me? Lanteiro. Good. Who would you say has been the most influential person in your life? Bruce Lee. I met him in 1969 at the National Championship. He gave an exhibition. We talked about martial arts. He introduced me to the Chinese style, which developed my fluidity and flexibility. He also got me into movies. He met him in Hong Kong when he was doing Enter the Dragon. We became good friends and brother martial arts. And you've come a long way since then. I've been world champion three times. Twice as a middleweight and once as a light heavyweight. I've also won 20 tournaments a year as a black belt. Ron, tell me. How did you get started doing this sort of thing? Uh, martial arts, that is. I've been involved in martial arts since 1955. My father taught me judo and boxing. One day I came home with a black eye. You better learn how to defend yourself, son. One of the striking similarities between the two of you is the dedication you both have toward training and building up your body. How many hours a day do you work out? I train five hours a day, seven days a week. I do a thousand punches and kicks on the heavy bag every day. Rigorous exercise is a must if your body is to be a weapon. You know, Ron, the question is often asked about him that if he had lived, would he have been as great an action film star as, say, uh, Clint Eastwood or uh, Charles Bronson? Do you think he would have? Possibly, but I don't think so. He was really interested in television. He wanted to get on another television series. Tell me, do you think there will ever be anyone like Bruce Lee in terms of approaching his popularity? I don't think anyone would be as popular as Bruce Lee. He was the prototype. Everyone else is an imitation. I think everyone should develop their own style, their individual style. Uh, one last question, Ron. Do you think Bruce Lee died of natural causes? No way. The blow he received in the head could have been caught by any technique. The swelling. I believe he was murdered. Thank you, Ron. This has been a most interesting conversation. But before we return to our matches, though, I wonder if you could show us another demonstration of your skill. Next beat is what I call the test of courage. I place two carrots on the necks of two of my students, and I will attempt to cut these carrots without cutting the heads off. Well, this should be something else. Are you ready? Ten, two. Incredible, Ron. Absolutely incredible. Would you mind doing that trick again? I'm sure it was so fast, some of our TV audiences missed it. Amazing. Hey, Look at her move. She's got glass in the end. Hey, baby, what you doing later? Wow, mommy, stop wearing on. Yeah. 
Hey, babe, wait up. Girls like that are only good for one thing. I got it. What are you That's the tightest little ass I've ever seen. She's good for only one thing. Hey, hey, up, hey, I got you. As you've heard me mention, I was the first to spot Bruce Lee's talent. But if the truth be told, there were many signs of Bruce's ability long before I came on the scene. First, of course, there was the hereditary factor. Bruce's great-grandfather was one of China's greatest samurai master swordsmen of the 19th century. A fact which takes on greater significance when one realizes that Bruce was not only born under the same astrological sign as his great-grandfather, but that he was born on the same day also. As a result, his birth itself was an omen. An omen that became harder to disassociate himself from as he grew up reading stories of his great ancestors' legendary heroics. Heroics that could not fail to influence a young boy's mind. birthday when his older brother returned home to visit after a long absence. Welcome home, Mr. Lee. Things haven't been the same since you've left. Park the car around the back, okay? I learned some terrific maneuvers in karate class, Sue. Hey, Bruce! Bruce! Jack! Sue, it's my brother. He's come home. Jack! It looks like he's been training again. Ah, oh, yes, he practices every day. Kung Fu is his whole life. It worries your mother very, very much. She doesn't know what to do. No kidding. Here's your keys. Anything else? No. Nah. Then I'll take your bags inside. Jack! Oh, Jack, you look great. Ma! Ma! Guess who's back? I missed you. So much has happened since you left. Karate classes are incredible. Yes. But the folks, they don't want me to be a black belt. Calm down. There'll be plenty of time to talk about it. First, let me say hello to Mom. There's Mom. I you he'd come back, Mom. He must have forgot something, perhaps his family. Please. It wasn't nice the way you did. I know. Tell me, do you know what your brother's done while you were away? Yes, he told me. 
More karate lessons. Mother, why are you so upset over my happiness? Ah, your brother has some explaining to do. Oh, brother. Well, whose fault was it? Nobody's. You have a short memory. Who was it that plastered his walls with karate posters? I don't believe this. Boy. Don't let her bug you. She does this to me all the time. No kidding. She doesn't know when to stop. And Pop's just as bad. I think they both enjoy it. Bruce, how can you say that? Your mother still deserves some respect. Nothing's changed. Boy, it's great to have him back, isn't it? Ma, are you feeling okay? Ma, I wish you'd look at this from my side. We're lucky to be the heirs of a great fighting tradition. I just want to follow in their footsteps. <laughs> and get yourself killed. Ma, karate is our family tradition, just like our business. Besides, it's much more exciting. I'm sure that's just how his great-grandfather felt in his days of glory. Chan, I wish to challenge him to a duel. To kill him as he killed Ting Tao Cheng. The man I want is Mo Yen Chan. The rest of you stay out of my way or you will die. <laughs> you only knew. Knew what? Mm, I don't understand you. Hey, Ma. Can I go to the karate matches? You'll have to ask your father. Ma! You should have seen me in karate class today. What happened? Well, mm, I got my black belt. Bruce, that's very good. Proud of me? Of course. <laughs> Ma! What's so funny? Pretty soon I'll be as good as great-grandfather was and carry on in the fighting tradition. 
Can't you see you're over-romanticizing again, Bruce? I think it's exciting. Well, you'd think that. I'm not a baby anymore. You know I can think for myself. I'm the best fighter there is. I can whip anyone. I can kill with my bare hands. You don't understand me. I know exactly how you feel, dear. All boys go through this stage, you know. What stage? This is what I want to do with my life. Oh, you're so silly, Bruce. She's humoring me. She's got it all wrong. That isn't the way it was back then. <laughs> You haven't a chance. I'll overcome you all. second. Please, Bruce, not now. Sue, I have tickets to the karate matches. Don't you want to go with me? I've saved plenty of money. No, keep your money. Use it for your karate lessons. Oh, this is for you. Oh, I was wrong. I'm sorry. It's been very selfish of me. Please forgive me. Oh, Bruce. I know that I'm no longer the most important thing in your life. Please, Sue, don't force me to make a choice. Please, let's not discuss it anymore. But, Sue, we've got to have an understanding once and for all. Hey, Bruce, come over here. I want to talk to you. Stay out of this. It's none of your business. Bruce, you're asking for a fat lip. Come on, cut it out. If you had some intelligence, you'd drop this guy. He's karate crazy. Wait a second. I know how you feel. I do sound a little crazy. But I love Sue and don't want to hurt her. I'll make good one day. You have to be patient. Give me a chance, and I'll show you what I'm made of. We've been patient. We've put up with this karate talk long enough. Now, when are you going to go out and get yourself a good job? You can't break boards for a living. It doesn't think you're such a smart guy. Bug off. You're asking for it. You're nuts. Listen, I'm saying this for the first and last time. If I ever catch you talking to my sister again, I'll take your head off. Brother, what's wrong with you? Listen to him. He's only showing off. All right. I understand. You really hate my guts. But... Let's not leave angry like this. I'm willing to part friends. I don't like European gestures. Well, all right. Well, now are you satisfied, you insensitive brute, you? You'll thank me years from now for this. No, I won't! I'll hate you! Like Bruce does? We'll see what his father has to say about that. Go home. <laughs> What is it? It's your son. I don't want him going out with my sister. He's putting crazy ideas into her head. Oh, really? Crazy ideas, huh? Sure it isn't the other way around. My sister. She's a good girl. And my parents and I think... 
She has too bright a future to throw it away on a lazy daydreamer like your son Bruce. So, she's a good girl, huh? Then what about the delivery boy? That's nothing but gossip. What proof do you have? How dare you stain our family name with all these vicious and tasteless accusations? Either back up what you're saying, or I'll expect an apology from you this very instant. Before I apologize, take a look at this letter that I just happened to have. Chuck, last night was great. Let's do it again. Love, Sue. My sister? She wrote all of this? So you see, your sister isn't the angel you thought her to be, is she? How dare you? Dad, what are you saying? Shut up. You've said enough. I'm warning you. If you spread that letter around, I'll kill you. I swear to it, I'll kill you and your rotten son. His father realized that Bruce was driving everyone karate crazy and felt it was time to have it out with Bruce once and for all. We knock. We must clear the air. Well, it's about time. Now I'll be able to sleep at night. I hope so. Ah, then you won't be such a royal pain in the ass, right? Ah, Bruce. Tell me, why do you like to hurt your mother? But I love mother. Love your mother? Ha! You do nothing but bring her grief and sorrow. You know, if he'd been taught to respect us at an early age, this wouldn't have happened. Ah, what's happened to today's youth? Gone to hell. <sighs> Papa, do you mean to tell me that you never wanted to be like great-grandfather? A samurai warrior? The greatest samurai. He was the king of them all. Oh. I guess I thought about it once or twice. Then you understand. Papa, I want this more than anything in the world. It's my whole life. I want to be the best. So you want to be the greatest? Don't you remember what I told you about the touch of death and how it haunted and destroyed your great-grandfather? Sure. But that's nothing but a lot of superstitious mumbo-jumbo. Ah, so you really think so, huh? Do you realize your great-grandfather's death is still a mystery? Huh? They found him by a roadside, his body and face all distorted. That's what the martial arts did to your great-grandfather. He never had any peace. Ah! has made me hungry. It's time I had some lunch. Always eating? Is that all you can think of? I'm hungry. But what about Bruce? Well, it's something to consider. Give me some time to think. Papa, thank you for understanding. Papa? Mm. Uh-huh. Does that mean I can continue studying martial arts? Well, I don't know. Well, then, can I go to the matches this afternoon? Karate matches? Why, of course, karate matches. Oh, too. I want more. Can I have something to eat for lunch, please? This is your lunch. What's this? Consomme, doctor's orders. Consomme? Can you bring me a steak? How do you want it? Medium rare. You know it's no good for you. Get it. Uh-huh. Papa, like I was saying before, if I could go to the matches... Shut up about these stupid matches, will you? Then you stop your sulking now. Uh, Bruce, did you finish your homework assignment on the art of the Ming Dynasty? Well, it's almost done. Up to your room. Yes, sir. 
Hurry! Right now. Could I do it tonight? It should have been finished yesterday. Please, Honorable Father. No. Sue! Sue! Oh, Jack, have you seen Sue? I think she went to the movies. She should be back pretty soon. Gee, that's odd. We had a date this afternoon. Sue! <clears throat> Driving you crazy with all that karate talk, huh? Although Jack understood what Sue was going through, she still sought other advice. So she went to the wise old caretaker who had long served the Lee household to understand Bruce's obsession with his martial arts ancestry. It all began long ago in a remote village where there lived an exciting samurai warrior, a real legend, a living champion. He was known as the greatest fighting warrior throughout the land, but his family was forever cursed. However, that's only one side of the story, for it wasn't long before Bruce's great-grandfather tired of killing and settled down with his wife and child to a peaceful existence. This peace was often disturbed, for his reputation attracted many who sought his assistance. Listen, Chan. General High's death has created an important vacancy in our council, which I wonder if you will consider taking. The fringe benefits are nice, and you'll be adequately furnished with the house of your own. You'll be accountable only to His Highness, with you on the council. You're quite generous, Your Highness. Yet I must refuse. Hmm? If I go on, there'll be no end to it. There's been too much bloodshed. Please. I wish you to have this sword. To protect your highness. I would deem it an honor if you would. Here. I rather think you should reconsider. For others may surely want to challenge you. There is really nothing to reconsider. No disrespect intended, your highness. Our house is here. As it happens, we are thinking of retiring. I shall have my house to attend. To while, my husband will fish. <laughs> Bruce's ancestor, Chan Lee, spent the next five years living a sheltered existence. That calm, though, was shattered when he confronted another in an endless parade of warriors who wanted to challenge him. Forgive the intrusion. Tan Chen Fei asks me to extend to you his warmest greetings, Chan. Tan Chen Fei? I don't know the gentleman. <laughs> 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 Your
Mr. Chan. Meanwhile, back at Chan's house, things were heating up. Your name is Chan. Chan! <laughs> the gentleman thinks that we're just playing, eh? No, quite the contrary. Stop that, you hear? You take us for idiots? <laughs> He's like a woman. <laughs> That's right. You mustn't be angry with her, Lu Chao. You might get the little girl mad at us. <laughs> She just needs a little gentle prodding, that's all, and she'll come with us piecemeal. Isn't that so, Lu Chao? <laughs> Why do you always ask me? Uh, let's show this little man who we are. We are the warriors known as the Eight Sea Monster. Let us show him a thing or two. <gasps> Attacked quite brutally. They came to your house. No. 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 To Chan, and only one thing. Jack. I'm leaving home. What? I'm running away from home, Jack. It's the only way to follow in the footsteps of Great Grandpa. And so, Bruce, with nothing more than the clothes on his back, left home to pursue his dream, never to return again. Father, I... I know. It's Bruce. He's gone. He left me a note this morning. I never thought it would have come to this. And he had such a promising future. But all that is nothing more than a dream to us now. Nothing more than just a dream. A waste. Such a terrible waste. Papa, it was Bruce's decision to do this. Oh, it's all your fault. Why did you have to come home again? All he did was open old wounds. Well, but he followed your example and ran away. But, Papa... But what? I tried. Yeah, you tried. Oh, no. Tried like hell. No more. With those crazy ideas about inner peace that you brought home from the big city of God knows where. You crazy kid. Papa, let's drop it all. No way. Sorry. Uh-huh. Perhaps you'd like to forget it was your fault, too. Well, he's on his own now, I guess. Papa... Like he wanted. I don't think you ever really understood him. I knew it just had to end this way. Maybe he'll find the happiness he seeks. He certainly didn't find it here. Yes. Maybe it was my fault. I'm through judging him. Let our ancestors do that. After all, it's their reputation he has to live up to. His fate is now in their hands.
He has a lot to live up to. Perhaps too much. I hope he finds happiness. Well, there's nothing... Upon leaving home, Bruce visited several Hong Kong film studios, trying to find work as a martial arts performer. He knew this was the fastest way to build a reputation, and gain the respect needed to become a samurai soldier of fortune, like his great ancestor. He had no luck until one day... What can I do for you, Mr. Lee? Do you have a job for me in your picture? It depends. Uh, what can you do? I can do karate. I'm also a practice. Aikido. Kung Fu. Some of this stuff involves stunt work and can be pretty dangerous. Uh, will your family approve? My family has no say in the matter. I hope you're not one of those uh, spoiled kids who thinks it's too important to get his hands dirty. There's no way. Then you've got the job. Now, like I told you, some of this stuff is pretty dangerous. You'll have to do a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Three or four guys are going to jump you at one time. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get seriously hurt. Now, I'm not promising you anything. This is a low-budget Chinese picture. But if it turns out okay, you'll get some international exposure. Now, from what I understand, they're putting together some sort of comic strip performance which features a martial arts character. So if you play your cards right... I could get an audition, possibly a contract, to appear in American pictures... Yeah, sure. ...and become more famous than my ancestors. Right, kid. Uh, but one thing. Let's get this picture done first. Uh, now, listen. Take this card. Come to this address tomorrow morning, and we'll have the wardrobe departed ready with your new clothes. Bruce did that film, and he did it well. He was a natural talent, with a tremendous charisma that movie cameras were able to capture. Here he is in a scene from that film. After that role, he was, as the producer promised, given a screen test for American television. Bruce Lee's screen test. Take one. The results were overwhelming, and Bruce was immediately given a Hollywood contract. This was important, for it gave him the credibility he needed to be able to speak out on the martial arts. Yet, though Bruce was widely respected by his peers, he never did feel at home amidst the tinsel and glamour of Hollywood. All he really wanted was to popularize his great-grandfather's fighting techniques, and he felt the fastest way to do this was to become one of the world's most respected action-oriented film stars. American audiences got their first exposure of Bruce during the run of the Green Hornet TV series. Meanwhile, he was expanding. During these early years, he created many memorable characters, the most popular of which was undoubtedly Cato. There's nothing happening around here today. Ain't nothing happening here today. Hey, look at that. Check it out. What you got? Shit, fucking cantaloupe tits. I sure love to get my hands on some of that. What are you waiting for? Come on. Hey, let's get the guys.
those guys bothering you? Yeah. You guys have no class. Who's this clean cut and bright eyes? You really shouldn't have done that. Shit, I'm getting the fuck out of here. This is yours? Why, thank you. Who are you anyway? The name's Louis. Bill Louis. Thank you so much. I'd like to stay, but uh, duty calls. Who was that masked man? He said his name was Louis. suggests another interesting aspect of Bruce's career. Namely, the incredible amount of emulation that Bruce Lee inspired. Few stars in any medium have been copied as frequently as Bruce. Some of the imitators were remarkably good, but none ever captured the spirit and charisma of Bruce's personality. Witness, for example, this clip of Bruce Lai, perhaps the most famous Lee imitator. Although the moves are technically accurate, the power is noticeably absent. Let us gain more light into this, the key area of Bruce's personality from one of his friends. Aaron Banks, you knew Bruce well around this time. What was he like? We met while he was doing the Green Hornet. He was a great guy with a fine sense of humor, and he was always experimenting with new things in the martial arts. Uh, when you got together, what did you two discuss? Well, we spent most of our time complimenting each other about our various accomplishments. Or finished. 
That's quite a scrapbook. You really accomplished a lot. Thank you, but I don't think so. You've done more in a few years than most men have done in a lifetime. Don't you agree? Nope. Aaron, it's you who've done a lot. You're the number one promoter of martial arts in the world. No, Bruce, it's you who's been the number one promoter of martial arts. Hey, while we're here, come on, show me that uh, new maneuver you've been working on. Occasionally, though, uh, you would show me one of the maneuvers he was working on. Watch closely, Aaron. It's a very fast and deadly maneuver. That is a pretty sharp maneuver. It's something I've been working on for a while, my friend. Is it related to the touch of death principle you recently rediscovered? A variation of it. How so? Psychological. Get it? Very much. What are you smiling at, Aaron? That looks just like what one of my students at the Karate King on it, because I showed it to him. But that extra work you added really gives it a whole new dimension. You better believe it. Splits the attention. It's really meant to distract you, Aaron. Can I teach it to the fighters I train? Even though you're the best handler of fights around, I don't think so. Well, if that's the way you feel, I'll go along with it 100%. So you see, Bruce was really a very good-natured... An interesting glimpse of Bruce's choir design. I know you have to get back to the yes, scorer's table, I so I won't keep you any longer. Thank you. So, there you have it. The Bruce Lee story. The early years. Told by the people who knew him best. A colorful story which gives great insight into an often ignored, but nevertheless, critical part of his life. Big match. This one featuring the incredible skill of Terry Yukahiga and his Okinawa Kempo Karate Academy. Higa is highly respected by his peers for his insistence on maintaining the traditional aspects of martial arts. Yet despite this, he always manages to thrill his audience with some exciting new delay, like the one you're seeing now. It just goes to show you that the traditional and innovative can find a happy marriage in the martial arts. And now let's look at the scene right out of I Am A Fugitive from a Karate Chain Gang. Look at those tigers go at it. There's no love lost there. Now, kids, I know this looks like a lot of fun, but I don't advise you do this without parental supervision. It can be very dangerous. And now let's watch as a couple of Higa's students engage in a little freestyle sparring. You've undoubtedly noticed that they look somewhat like fences, but all that protection is necessary, for a stray kick can be just as dangerous as a sharp blade. This is a very good exercise in developing timing, balance, and overall coordination. Higa is a strong proponent of stressing the basics, and the skills of his students reflect that. Higa's students are setting up for their next demonstration, but what's this? The crowd in appreciation for the marvelous show he's put on is giving him a rousing ovation. Listen to those fans. But he does not want to rest on his laurel, and he's already out there for his next demo. This is a two-on-one attack using stick. Look at those moves. Reflexes so quick that his own body doesn't know what he's going to do next. Give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. He really deserves it. Keeping with Higa's penchant for innovation, he has prepared a real treat for us tonight. A feat never before performed in the United States. The crowd can sense the significance of this. There's an electricity in the atmosphere that's hard to describe. Higa is readying himself now as his assistant places the sledgehammer. The other students are leaving the ring area to avoid any distraction and to give everyone the best possible view. A nervous excitement fills the air. Higa's assistant this stroke very carefully. The slightest miscalculation could shatter Higa's arm beyond repair. If this goes as planned, Higa's arm will split the boards in half while itself withstanding injury. He's done it! But wait, he's not finished yet. There are still some boards unbroken. They set up quickly and... Yes, the remaining boards are shattered. What an effort. You can see how emotionally draining that was. But let's hope Heber can summon the strength to take one last bow with his students in front of this appreciative.
you to crowd. That Terry Yuka he gets. He's really something else. Don't you think so, Fred? I don't. As I mentioned earlier, not everyone here this afternoon feels that this afternoon's bout will accurately determine Bruce Lee's successor. Many feel that there's no way anyone can make such a claim to Bruce's title. Perhaps the most vocal of these people is the man sitting here next to me. I'm speaking, of course, about international film star and former pro football player, Fred Williamson. Fred, would you mind repeating some of your views for our TV audience? Well, these are not just my views at all. Mm -hmm. These are the facts. And the fact is that this match is just another fight between two good karate fighters. I mean, it's an insult to Bruce Lee to think that either one of them could succeed him. Well, tell me, what about your martial arts background? Do you think you're as good as Bruce Lee? I mean, why should I have to be? I mean, why should they? I mean, Bruce Lee was great at what he did. I'm fantastic at what I do. <laughs> but you're avoiding the question. What about the martial arts? Do you really feel that you have the skills necessary to live up to Bruce's reputation? Look, Adolph, I do all of my karate fighting in all my films. I do all my stunts. I mean, they didn't call me the hammer for nothing. Well, Fred, you do present a most convincing argument. But as we both know, it's the public that decides these things. And it's been the public who has labeled this match the one that will determine Bruce's successor. Well, unfortunately, there's nothing uh, I can do about that. But I feel that in order to achieve the success that Bruce Lee reached, one has to be physically developed as well as mentally developed. I mean, these two things have to become one. But in the meantime, we'll see one of my movies and we know what I'm talking about. Well, thank you very much, Fred Williamson, for your observations, and good luck in your quest to be the best. Right on. Let's get back to some ring action. <laughs> Karate fans will recognize that man in red, white, and blue as Richie Barate. What's this? One of his sparring partners appears to be hurt. Looks like Barate put a little too much power into that kick. The fighters do wear protective padding, but that's not much protection against that kind of brute force. Fortunately for this fellow, he can manage to walk away from a kick like that. That's probably the worst stomach ache you'll ever have. But seriously, folks, he appears to be okay. Barathee also looks to be regaining his composure, something he'll really need to do because they're now setting up for Richie's main attraction. Barathee is fast becoming a household name as a result of his recent appearances on the Johnny Carson Show. It was there he smashed 13 flaming boards to pieces with a hammer fist, incurring in the process serious third-degree burns. He won't be performing that trick tonight, not because he's afraid, but because his doctors have forbidden it. In order to compensate for this cutback, though, he's added another board, bringing the total to 14. If he smashes this, it will be a new world's record. And what a would be, especially considering the handicaps he's had to overcome. For instance, when he was two, he lost the sight in one eye in a tragic accident. Loss of sight in an eye means a reduction of depth, making even simple acts of coordination very difficult. Over the years, his peers have been amazed at his ability to maintain control over his techniques without depth perception. Another handicap has been a serious blood disease he's had since he was 17. It's dormant now, but he's had to suffer through heart attacks and prolonged periods of incapacitation in learning to live with it. He's just about ready to begin, so we'd better lower our voices as the height of concentration is required. Discussed because of the entire touch of death controversy which surrounded. Here we 
seek not only a winner, but an answer to the following question. Will that winner in succeeding groups also inherit his so-called purse? Two losses in full contact. And now look at Flood. He appears to be coming on strong with a series of uppercuts and combination flurries. Negley is waiting for an opening. Watch out, Cyclone. Negley's feet have the potential to. And there it is. His deadly kick. Come on, come on, get him in the head. Flood is back on the offensive. Even though Flood is the champion, Negley is the crowd favorite tonight because he's literally fighting in his own backyard, having been born and raised in Brooklyn. Go, go, go! <laughs> They're going at it now, toe to toe, trading punches. Hey, look at this exchange. They're both taking a lot of punishment. But they're tough. They can take it as well as dish it out. Both fighters are on the attack, looking for that opening which will provide a quick knockout and there's the bell, ending round one. Boy, that was some exchange. It's hard to imagine how someone can last through 10 rounds of that. By the way, each round is scored on a 10-point must system with three judges, the referee not being allowed to score. Word is apparently coming down from the press box that Neglia won the first round on a split decision. Two of the judges going with Neglia and one with Flood. And there's the bell for round two. Flood leads in with a hard right and sends Neglia bouncing off the ropes. He's covering up. Now Neglia is on the attack. A right, a left. Another right, and Flood is down. The referee is motioning Neglia to a neutral corner. Flood is obviously hurt. The referee is giving him a mandatory eight count. And Flood says he's okay. And they're back at it. This is turning into one hell of a fight.
garden is empty now. The fighters have gone home. The building is closed for the night. What have we discovered from all this? A new champion? Perhaps. A successor to Bruce Lee? I doubt it. Well, you see, what most heir apparents to Bruce seem to forget is that to be the best, you must beat the best. And Bruce Lee was the best. And he can no longer be beaten. So all else is just speculation. And I, for one, am glad. For why should we try to topple his legacy? Its existence, I think, has such a positive influence. To sum it all up, I cannot help but recall Ron Van Cleef's remark about Bruce. He was the prototype. Everything else is just an imitation. The secret of karate is power, internal power from the ear. The vibrating car, how does it work? It's internal power. I don't think anyone can this part of this person. Some of this stuff involves stunt work and can be pretty dangerous. I'm the best fighter there is. I can whip anyone. I can kill with my bare hands. In order to achieve the success that Bruce Lee reached, one has to be physically... The touch of death is a positive energy. These two things have to become one. 